Well, I've arrived at a fishery, never been here before. It's called Headlands Farm. It's got two lakes. One's over there, one is here, by the pylons here. So I can plug in and charge my phone if I want up there, I guess. Always a bit strange, you get that trepidation the night before and excitement, you think, oh, new fishery. And then you get a new fishery, you go, oh my God, I don't know where to go. And there's only two or three acres fishing. I've seen one carp for about three pounds. Um, it's very, very shallow, very shallow because we had no rain. I plumbed the other lake, I can't believe I plumbed the other lake, it's about 14 inches deep. And I've done something which I never do before, and that is take a walk around both lakes before I start. So it is, it is awesome o'clock, 5 to 11, and I haven't even started fishing yet. Um, it's got a no ground bait rule, so a bit of loose feed, that's why I've got some maggots and worms. So it's a catch anything day. Um, only one of the chap fishing over there, but it's very, very shallow. I haven't seen more than a few little muds come up. And I'm surprised if they've got decent carp in here, which I'm not really into the carp, but um, I'm surprised that they don't actually show, as it were, pushing because the water's so shallow. Anyway, let's get up there and take a look. Yeah, I've uh, been plumbing it with a float over on that other lake. And it's so shallow. They get some nice perch in here, apparently, as well. It's allegedly pike. I might have a go. I have got a few sprats. This one is very coloured, this lake very low at the top end when I had to walk around but the reason I've come up here is because I've seen bubbles on the surface but they're from fish jumping not from fish blowing there are ducks up here and I'm not uh, altogether sure whether it's fish splashing or the ducks when I take a gamble walk along I've got some building work going on a house so hopefully we don't get too much noise there um, there's an island there. The thing is, no one knows cables. I want to be underneath the cables. I want to be just off of them. Yeah, there's a couple of ducks, but I've got a feeling some of these bubbles are from fish. It opens up around here. Yeah, there's bubbles there. Let's put this down here and just have a quick look. Unless you get the inside information on where to fish, it can be pretty daunting in new places. You end up fishing, and then some local tells you you're in the wrong spot. See, there's all bubbles here. This surface bubble's not thrown up. So, coloured and shallow, and there's just no movement on the surface. It's weird. Right, I'm going to show you these lilies down here. Oh, hang on a minute, boys. It might be actually a very slight ripple there. Fish bubbles here, 100% fish bubbles digging. They're a different type of bubble. Those have stayed floating. These are popping, so that tells me there's a, a fish just around that bush. I may move down here and fish. I dare say it's probably fish all over. And just look how, how low it is here. You can actually see the lilies. Sometimes I don't mind low, because sometimes you can isolate fish. You can see fish there. A patch of bubbles over there. That's a fish. There might be a fish shape. I didn't bring my polarizing glasses. I think there's a carp moving over by those rushes, yes. And there's some mud down here, this shallow end. Oh, there's a carp, I can see a carp. Not a very big one, five pounds. It's just down there, just down there. Now there's all the usual rules, no floating baits, barbless hooks, etc., etc. And this one assumes is the inflow pipe, all dry. And that's the first time, I think for some time, that I've actually seen Lilies, in fact they've died there, the lilies bone dry, so it must be dropping fast. Two carp, one up there, one there, but I still fancy trying in the middle. There might be some roach, rud, there's silvers in here they say as well, some silvers. Gentlemen fishing up there. Oh, plenty of choice of swims. Right, let's get uh, tackled up. Well, I did go around and talk to that other chap earlier on. You see, because it's come down a metre, it was up there. And look at it now, it's like a beach there, gravel, gravel beach. Ah, oh, another fish moved there. Very, very, very slight ripple. That's all you're looking for to give you a bit of a key of an area. So, if I don't cast up and electrocute myself, I possibly might fish in here. What I've done, I've just thrown a handful of uh, the two mil coarse pellets in that swim there. And I think it's going to be one of those days where I'm going to be roving and moving. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. So, 
you know what, I think I'm going to plumb that first, guys. I think that's a sensible thing before I start heaving bait in. Let's get unclipped, sorted out. Right, I've rigged up just an Avon rod here and a 3,500 sounds real, usual five pound, six pound line. I've got a waggler float there with three, tell a lie, four, that one slipped. With four treble A's on. And then a, a plummet. Now this is important because that pulls the float under and it tells you to set the depth, for instance, you know, if I, if I drop it down there, I can tell, look, it's, oh my God, six inches deep. <laughs> oh dear. This is why you plumb a depth first. Very slightly deeper there. No, it is barely, folks. Let's just go out there with it. You just, just plumb around to start with before you throw your bait in. I'd say it's going to be one of those lakes that's fairly even all the way over. It's not putting the float under, you see. So obviously it's just pretty well even all the way. And what happens is, when they dig these places, they dig it and put it on the bank, on the make the islands like that. So they tend to be a slope and the channel's more likely to be in the middle uh, than in the margins. The margins would tend to be in this type of lake, I think, a small fish rose over there. I think they would be more likely to be deeper in the middle and down here very shallow. Now the other thing is I can either float fish there or I can float fish here. So even all the way over this is going to be really difficult. I need a black float and I've got those lines across there and all that conglomerate of crisscross bits of metalwork and this. So it's difficult to see the float. Whereas over here I should, should be able to see the float a lot easier. There. I think I'm going to chuck some bait out there. Just checking that depth. No, it's very, very, very shallow. Right, I've got the Matchmas catapult, which is very, very good for accuracy. I haven't got many pellets. I did bring some ground bait, but you can't use ground bait here, so... I'm going to go for the gap in between those two bushes over there. See how far they go. See if we can't get a few fish showing and I've got maggots as well. Feels a bit strange with no ground bait going in. Because the thing is small fish will just munch their way through these. Do you know what? I hate to say it but I think I can see clouds of mud coming up there. Surely that's not fish taken already. I'll tell you what I think it is. Are they taking these on the drop? We'll have the pellets just spook some fish. I'll tell you, we'll give them a few maggots as well. I've got worms because I was going to try for perch, but I think I've put, uh, in fact, I've got more maggots than I've got some um, pellets. I'm going to dig around in here and find a rod rest. Extended. I'm going to fish. In fact, I do it quite a lot now, guys. I just fish a buzzer. I know I'm float fishing. But because I'm filming, I'm looking away a lot for looking for shots or looking down the camera, I miss the float going. This way, at least if I get a take, I've got the backup of the buzzer. That's the way I fish anyway. It's just a bonus. Especially if it works. This will wake everybody up. That's it, that's all we need. That's annoying me, that shot. Put it the other side of the treble A up here. Just slide that one down, tuck it in there. Now I could ledge this, but I just feel it's a sort of float fishing water. And it's barbless hooks, so what I do, I don't like fishing one maggot with barbless hooks, because they will wriggle off. Some people put a plastic one on the end. I like to pop one over the eye. It generally will stay there. Like this. 
Oh, there's mud out there, definitely. There is definitely mud. Cannot believe I'll be lucky enough to... I go past the swim, look, so I don't spook the fish. Where's my float? There, and I'm gonna wind right back in. I'm right over that muddy area. Check the drag, I'm a bit tight. Barbell fishing. I was barbell fishing on the Y previously, so that's pretty tight. Now when I move my second float run up, if that goes, I might hear it on the buzzer. Guys, I've just come, I'm up there. There's a fish moving on top, I've come right around here. I thought I'd just put a couple of little pockets of bait and I saw something that looks like fish moving. I can't tell you how close in, I cannot tell you. If it is a carp, it ain't a two or three pounder. So I might get rid of all my bait like this, but I should just get one fish out of it. Well, I'm gonna go and get the rub, people. I put some in that corner over there. Look how far that's dropped. Now I'm getting excited now. I think I've got no polarizing glasses because it's so cloudy, you can see it's a real funny day, but that, now what I've got to do is for those other people come around, if they do, I mean, a lot of people don't walk around, they don't, you know, they just fish. But I, didn't, I, sh I should make myself do this more often, check, check things out. And you see, I've just got a few pellets and a few maggots, and that's going to last me all day. A pint of maggots and maybe a pint of pellets, so I've got to make it count. That's weird. I cannot believe it. I've just walked past. I didn't chuck more than about 10 or 20 pellets down here. Just in close. And I'm sure I'm going to chuck a few more in there. Maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe I'm dreaming, but I think I saw a carp moving in there, or some sort of fish. I definitely saw something <clears throat> moving this swim, so... I've, I've not even bothered float fishing up there. Fish moved here. I'm going to come in a wide berth. I'm going to use this little bush here as a screen. Uh, maybe they've gone. Maybe they've noshed on it and gone. Who knows? There was fish there, trust me. All I'm using here is free line with a BB hook, about size 12 barbless there, and I'm guessing probably four or five maggots on there. Yeah, I should have walked around with the rod, I don't see any fish moving there now. I think I'm just gonna, they're just gonna pile the maggots on to be honest. It's a new fishery, I don't know how the locals fish it. The fish are taking loose feed. Put one red one in as a slightly different target, pop it over the eye of the hook. Loose feed goes in and as you can see that looks very very yum yum. Right. They cannot surely have eaten all those pellets. I've just lowered it in there. Then I walk back, I'm just going to touch ledger. I'm going to watch the line where it enters the water there. Oh! <laughs> Got myself a flying fish, boys. I thought that was a carp take. One flying perch. Oh, there's a big carp, guys. Right in close. So they do come in, I thought the perch were, I think he might have been spooked by the lion. Oh, great. Look, how many times have you all guys done that? I haven't got hardly any maggots. So the best thing to do is kick the picking bucket over and then have even less maggots than you thought you had. And then get the line around the leaf. Sweet. Don't mind losing them in the water, but these are a valuable commodity when you don't have too many. Sensible boy, how sensible are you? People, I've just come around and put the waggler float on. I've dropped my packet of crisps and I've loaded up and I've used a big lobworm. It's digging and digging and digging. I've spoken to Alex, the owner here, and he said this perch in here, wait to this, there's supposed to be one over five pounds. This fish is going nuts. 
I'm going to have to follow it, people. I'm going to have to follow this fish. Something, something bizarre is happening here. Oh, it's stripping me out. Where the hell? I'm going to climb down here. Something strange here. Got a barbless hook as well. I'm on the beach. Come on. Just one fish, just one fish would be nice. Wow. He's smacking of a foul hook fish. It's not a jerky drag, so I've got finger pressure on it as well, don't stop it. It's smacking of a foul hook fish somehow. I'm gonna give him some side straight. Just too much power. And of course with the barbless hook, there's every chance this will just ping out. I'm going on back wide as well for safety, put the net down ground. I just want to maintain a nice even pressure on this fish because the way he zooms off. Oh dear, oh dear. I've got the old Avon Rods Max right over. I've got a bad feeling about this, people. He's trying to get under that bush there. That does not feel like. I mean, I know these rods from years of using them. That does not feel like a five pound fish, or five pound fish for sure. And as it's found. Get a foul hook fish, just maintain pressure. Smooth, even pressure. I may be totally wrong, it might be legit. He wants the battery go out on the camera. Now he's going again. That, that, that doesn't feel right, this fish. Does not feel right at all. Come on, babe. Come on. I want to see it. Here's the float. Wag the floats up. He is stripping. Man, is he going? Look. It's got like a foul hook feel about it. The way it zooms away. I've got it being hooked in the tail is correct. Nice carp, though. How can that? I've been digging around on the bottom. And it must have got... It just swirled and tangled in it. Oh, is that I didn't even see the float go. I just heard the... Oh, dear. I just heard the... Uh... I heard the rod getting dragged across the grass. It's trying to turn him over, so I'm not talking. I think it's a nice carp. It's very nice carp. But he ain't having any of it. He is not having any of it. No, he's just not quite close enough. Oh, God. The blood's about to go and explode into fragments. I got him. Oh, yes. Look, he's hurt people. <laughs> how on earth has he got a bunch of worms? And that's how easy it falls out. Hooks out there. Let's just put it on the mat for you. This was a bonus fish because only pure angling skill got me this fish. He swirled around digging up bait, got the worms, were tangled around him, and a barbless was very lucky to get him out. But there you go. Listen, take luck over skill every time. Well, I'm pleased with him. Nice big thick head on him. Look at that. Awesome fish. Big white, big orange tail there. Let's get him straight back. And then I want to try out there. I'm getting small bites. So maybe, maybe out there's some rudd as well, but I put a worm on just to get away from the little perch and that's done the trick. Big strangling lobworm. And um, the owner said dry bread as well, so I'll give that a go. There he is. Probably gonna get wet, you never know. Off he goes, what a beauty. Lobworms rule, eh? Now what Alex did say, on the other lake in a bay up there is the place to try for pike. So I think, you know what, I'm going to give this a go here for a while. And I have got some sprats with me. I think I'm going to try that. Because I can always come back here and give it a go. And the other lake is somewhat clearer. I'm going to go mad with these maggots because the perch are just nailing them. 
but you need to get bait out there to get those fish feeding in the first place. They're already, I can see mud come up, it's so shallow, unbelievable. And I've got a worm just down here, just out there. I've got my worms in grass and stuff, couldn't find any moss. I was doing the garden yesterday, I got plenty. But again, if I chop these up and fish for perch like normal, I'm going to get inundated with the perch, those small perch. I'm going to use big bunches of, of lobworms on the float. And I've kicked the maggots over. I'm just about to kick my flask of tea over. So, let's get this rigged up. He can go in the pellets. He was obviously swirling around the worm, that carp. I was watching the flight, I just saw the line shooting over the, across the surface. It just dragged through the surface. I think the only way around these perch is either bread, which perch don't take normally, sweet corn, lunch and meat, which I don't have, or strangling great worms, bunches and bunches of worms. And even then, those perch will shred them, little baby perch. This one's free lining with a BB on it. I've got the drag set light. No bobbing, I'm just leaving it, just letting it rest there on the ground. Come back round the other side, guys. Oh, perch, oh no, a bit bigger, a bit bigger, a bit bigger. I'll come back round again because I did see a big swirl around here. This is, oh, on lobworm, look. A smaller carp, and this is why I think with those pellets, it's a small one, look, that little small carp. I think with pellets they're just hoovering them up that loose feed. They're slipping back. But even so, look, big worm like that, he still had it. I'll drop that a little bit further out on touch ledger in here, just swinging it out like this. Every time I come up, the, the big carp goes. So I've just gone a little bit deep. I'll put some uh, more pellets in there. No, they're not having it. And, and you can see why, because these are the smaller car, all the small fish in here must absolutely hoover everything up. As I say, there's no ground bait here. If you had ground bait, you could feed them off, but you can't feed them off. So basically, it's non-stop uh, non eating machine really down there. Or anything like maggots, so I think I might go to bread. People always ask me what I'm using Rob Boys. This is a Nomura. Let's have a look at it. 30T carbon. Oh God, I can't even read that. 2.1 meters in length. What does it throw? 10 to 35 grams. But the bad news is I've already broken it. So it's glued here. It's a one, it was a two piece, it's now a one piece. The reel I do like is a little, it's a Nomura as well, I think. I think that's a Nomura Aiko 1000. You've probably seen me use it before. Got a brand new 10 pound line on that. And I've got a sprat, let's show you people the bait. But it's on a single barbless, about size 10 with SSG for weight, wire trace. These are the ones that old Berry Hill do for their Xander. And I can always put a bit of rubber band over the hook if I start losing baits. Because obviously with baits, when you're twitching, you can actually twitch the bait right off. The swan shot is probably, when I had a go plumbing around it, it's not deep. It's probably making it sink a little bit too much. But I've got to, I suppose, what's the time? It's one o'clock, I think I've got to give it till two o'clock to see if I can just get one pike. It would be nice, don't know how big they grow here. It's a little bit clearer this lake too, yeah. It's probably, probably sinking a little bit too fast, but I'm gonna give it a go. And the sprats I've got, not the greatest ones, I had to buy them pre-sealed like this. I actually like to buy the fresh ones with the ice and then sort them out and grade them into sizes, which I find much better. But this Namura rod is very, it's pretty stiff. I have to say, what I do is when I'm twitching, look, you're always gonna run the risk of snagging up. I watch the bow in the line. So when the bow is pulling away like this, when you cast and it's pulling away like this and stops, that's on the bottom, then you can start it back. So you wanna be sort of two thirds depth, I find for pike. But I mean, you've gotta know where they are. My guess is they might be around the edges here. It's always, always a bit of an unknown quantity, a new water, no information. I'm going to get underneath 
if I can, any, any overhangs like this and always be prepared for the take because it could be quite violently stroke aggressive and always make sure you watch that sprat look right at the last minute because a pipe will very often follow it in and take it just as you're about to lift it out of the water and that if you get one about eight or ten or twelve pounds is explosively exciting so should I get a, a grab or a take I can drop the rod immediately open the bail arm so he doesn't feel it give it about ten seconds just on average and then you can wind down the strike but first we've got to cover some ground I'm going to go up in that bay over there as well that is very very fishy but not knowing the water is difficult to say the least nobody to tell you where to do what to do I think it's no lures here I'm not sure I think seem to remember it said no lures I've got a lure box with me but I'm going to just do about six casts here as you can see one two three four five six and then do the same from the other side because sometimes a pike will now if I, if I just watch that I can tell you that sinking 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 that's on the bottom now so it's probably only about four feet deep if you want to cover ground you can sort of constantly whine and just do a little jigging motion it's kicking and flashing all the time that felt like a bump that felt like a bump that felt like a bump guys hmm now I don't know where the snags are in here but that was out there if you're here there could be stuff on the bottom you know that that certainly felt like a bump so all I'm going to do is just tighten up to it that's a small pike I'm going to say very small pike that's going to take a while just to get hold of the bait now I'm watching the line where it enters the water there it's just moving away when I feel him I'm on I'm on pike on it is indeed a small pike listen single hook any pike is good oh he's not that small yeah he's a small pike he's off barbless hooks doesn't matter I've got a pike out of it I guess he's about two or three pounds now I'm going to move go around there well 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 just as I was saying about the type of take <laughs> bang I got the take it's a bump I can't describe it. it's a bump very often it'll be a violent snatch but generally generally it's more of a bump just walk around here and I'm going to obviously that pike I won't catch again I'm right, right in close I'm not bothered just here to show you a few fish when you hook a sprat you want to make sure you go god this hook's tiny right through the center and out and what you can do if they start coming off the hook is put a little piece of rubber over the top of that to stop you losing so many baits right I think we'll show you again how to catch a pike to me that is a perch right under that island there I'm going to switch off till I get another take guys or maybe I'll let it run I've got a shot in my mouth guys just free lining I've got a hook up just saw a load of mud coming up and put a slow sinking piece of uh, bread on as the owner said try a piece of bread and at the moment I'm attached to a carp I had no more pike in case you guys want to know absolutely no more pike at all one bump so I tell a lie I did have one bump this one I'm gonna play back down here see if I can keep it away from that sort of mudded area that I saw it's some more down here swirling you just see the leaves swirling there that's fish wow this would be nice to get this fish out wouldn't it it would be nice it's a good scrapper wow we got that right over it looked about six eight pounds I don't know I was right in amongst the mud and just saw that line straight and I said before if you watch the line where it enters the water then you get a very very good bite I mean this thing's taking line off me at the moment not much I can do got quite a lot of uh, pressure on him oh, long, wrong way 
he rolled the wrong way, he ain't gonna like that now. It's a common, it's a commoner's mark. He does not wanna, he does not wanna roll over this one. Oh, give me a break, people. Just give me a break. He's tangled it all around his fin now, so he's got even more power. He's got even more power now. Oh, just come on, I had him on the edge of the net and his head was the wrong way. Never scoop at a fish till it's ready. That looks like that might be me. Oh yeah, man alive, that's a nice carp. Wowee. Nice big paddle tail. One quick hold for the camera. I've got to get him in people because the rain is not good in the, in the camera my bag's up there. Let's slide him back. Okay, here he goes. That, is it not a nice carp? Well, that was a bonus. Absolute bonus, that one. I'm gonna put him about nine. I think he's just shy of doubles. Well, I've been around to check, uh, boy, I chuck that loose feed in around there. Nothing. I've got this slow sink piece of bread here and I'm going around looking for, for uh, muds, what I call muds, where they're digging on the bottom and stirring it all up. Their fins are swirling around, they're stirring it all up. But it's what we call white cloud. Can you see this white? It's nice and dark over there. So I could see any mud change colours come up there, but I can't see it here. So I'm having a lot of trouble. This light's going around that way. We call it white cloud. If you go like, say, bone fishing or tarpon fishing in shallow water, where it's absolutely adamant that you've got to visually spot your fish, this is the worst light. It's called white cloud. So I look up here in the swim. Oh. I'll put some pellets down there. It seems to be going, but I don't see any mud coming up. Oh, a bit of mud out there. I did chuck something out there. I think I'll have a go with the float. Well, I've got my uh, BB shot there just to take the flake, sinking very, very slowly to the bottom. I can see a little bit of mud colour out there, so I'm going to put the flake out there. I don't think I'm going to get bothered. Hopefully. Yeah, it's sinking. Hopefully I'm not going to get bothered by the perp. Well, another guy just came around from around the side here. He said, oh, he's fished here before several times and done well. He said for some reason he's doing something wrong with it, it's not on the bite today because he said normally you get plenty of action and he's not getting any fish at all. So I'm not alone, in fact I might even be doing okay. There's been a couple of bream caught by some guys right down in the bay there. So, not much going on, so my one pike and two carp are what it's all about on a new water. I think it's all down to local knowledge and this is what I've been catching one after the other in comes number 153 I mean I did want to go perch fishing they said there's big perch here but look look at the size of that perch <laughs> he's a, he's a, the worm could almost strangle him couldn't it really look at it they are some greedy little fish in fact he's not even hooked he's hooked on the outside he's hooked on the outside there Guys, I've just come back where I've dropped all my bait. It's absolutely, totally mudded up. But they are so spooky, it don't bear thinking about. I'm on my hands and my knees right in this bush. They've muddied it so much, I can't actually see where to lay the bread flake on. I've got my float rod out there, but I think the float's going to be too aggressive, if you like, in there. I've just thrown a load more maggots in very, very close. So I want to be able to see them to target them. I feel if I stand up, I'm going to be stuffed. Well, here we go, something different. Different species, not a very big one, but for those beginners out there, this one is a small rud. A very lively small rud. Let's put the rud down, ground to it properly, show these folks at home. This is about as good a pike bait as you're ever going to want to get. Little baby rad, lovely little orange bits to his fins. But even though I'm piking, I have got some sprats, so this one can go back. But trust me, that is absolutely almost a guaranteed pike. The guy's got big fish hooked up right under my feet. I just walked up 
he's not fighting at all, I'm going to take him first time because this might be the only fish of this session to finish me off and give me a close out fish. Wow, it's a big one too, it's a big one. Oh, now he's woken up. I put the. Why did I say that? Who made me say that? Who sold me these hooks? I hope it wasn't. Uh, yes, Smith. It was a most peculiar take. Most peculiar take. Most peculiar take. Oh, oh no, he's fighting. That's probably because I'm fighting. I could have had him really early on. He was piling into the maggots and I just lowered down a bait. Watch the line. Took my eyes off the line to look at something else. Just felt a tug on my fingers. Where well, he's going now. This is a nice fish. Now he's peeling me out. Okay. He knows he's hooked now. I say this one very close to a double. Wow! Look at him go. I can't seem to. I can't seem to roll him. Nah, I'm going to pop him off if I'm not careful. Got the rod too flat now. No, he's peeling. He's peeling me out, but you can't stop him. Just take your time. If you get any big fish, take your time. I'm losing line. Doesn't matter. I've got a lot of line on the reel. He really is piling it. Pile it into me now. I'm going to turn him over with side strain. There you go. That's moved him. I've turned him right round. Go on, back wind as well. Don't wind and let this spin at the same time, folks. Especially youngsters, you twist the line up. This is a good fish. Trust me. I could take it off and get a different angle, but I think, do you know what, it's been one of those days, Graham. Just try and get the fish. There was two down there. I just stood up to look for my pike gear. And they just moved in. Man, this fish is going. I could have had him within 10 seconds, I'd say. I think I'm going to get him. He's in. Oh, he's only just in. He's only just in. Bloody hell, that's a good fish. It's a two-hander. Yep. That's a good one. What do you think, people? I think that's a... It's definitely a double. It's somewhere between 11 and 12 pounds, I'm guessing. Slide them out over for you. Well, I had a result there. I think, oh, to be honest, oh yeah, he's about, he's about 12 pounds, I would think. Nice fish. Well pleased with that one. Got a bit of funny mouth, but still, good enough mouth to take my piece of bait. That's a nice fish. Let me just get him in recovering. Just let him recover. And away he goes. What I'm going to do is, I've got some pellets left. I hooked that fish by that black stick down there. So I'm going to bail them a, a good bit of bait in there. Because there was two fish. I'll go and do a bit of piking. I'm putting the maggots on the inside in ridiculously close. Otherwise, the um, perch are going to scoff a lot. And then when maybe I come back, there might be another one because the sun's going down and really with half a dozen sprats that's all i've got left eight ten sprats i'll give it a go always cover your bait over people because the dicky birds are prone to come and steal things i've never done a lot of good fishing in low light conditions in the evenings of course i've had them in almost pitch black but general consensus is they're visual feeders they need to see a moving bait, and I'm twitching a bait. Now, if you were fishing a static dead bait, there's every chance if you were in a spot you knew the pike um, were active in, you could actually pick them up on dead baits at night. And I know a guy that caught a th one over, th over 30 pounds in the margins, like down there, really close. And I assume the pike moved in on the small fish, the smooth, small fish move in, which is why I call that carp, that double figure carp back there, is because they started to move in and think all the anglers have gone home except me so they know that they assume i've gone home so they come in to mop up the bait which i've thrown in the margins and the same happens for pike 
the anglers throw their bait in the margins or you know just dump their bait boxes in there the small fish move in and the pike move in as well it's just a complete life chain and if the anglers at the other end they might get a pike out of it as well I don't want to keep catching loads of those tiny perch all the time on the worms and stuff so if I rest that other lake I've piled all the bait in lost another bait because I haven't got the rubber band on it piled all the bait in and then when I go back there might there just might be another bit of activity just before I pick up so I could pick being greedy one more fish off the same goes here nobody's been pike fishing this so it's always worth a few extra throws especially with a setting like that my goodness look at it I've got to find a decent pike water. I used to catch quite a lot of pike years ago. I did it right through the winter. I do two things. I used to do shore cod fishing and pike fishing. I think that bait's come off again. Now, even if you've covered a bay, which I have pretty well here, it doesn't hurt to go around and cover, cover it from a different angle. Just cast the bait in a different angle. I'm gonna cover this bay casting towards the table over there. And then I go around there and cast back or sideways, you know, just to cover a little bit of different ground. There they are, guys, just in front of me. Oh, I've got to... Big fish, too. One's a big fish. I can't move it. There's two or three there, but one is a good fish. Try to ease forward on my chair. Look at the swirls there, guys. I can't see the fish. Oh. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was the big carp. And instead, come back down here. It's a flying perch. I think they're still there, the carp, but they could have spooked it, this Mr. Perch here. You naughty chappy. Get yourself discord your kids, look how easy that is. I might try a piece of bread flake. Really spooky. Bunch of maggots. Some down here. Even the ducks are scared. Now they're very, very low and shy. Very nice, try. Well, I finally got it hooked up on maggots just down here. Number three battery's gone, so I'm trying to get you the best I can from there. And this really will be the last fish. He says, still looking down there, right by that boulder they were. And this was just on a, as many maggots as I could bundle on there. And there was about four or five cart there, and they went whoosh. I didn't know which one had taken the maggots, and then the rod nearly came at my hand. Well, it's turned into a halfway decent session. Especially if I can get this one out. Yeah, it's about a five, six pound, that's a good fish. Just pay to hang on all the time. Yeah, I should get him out, hopefully. Hopefully, 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 if he'll roll. Just get him to roll. Or not. God, my elbow's killing me. Did a lot of digging yesterday, so I've got so many worms. Nice fish. If I can get him. Come on, come on, come on. He's in. He is in. Wow, boys. That finally is a close out fish. Mirror carp. Not a big one, look, not a big one, I know. Maybe eight pounds, something like that. Good to finish with. Now I'm really going home. We'll see you guys in the next episode of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Mm -hmm.